everyone! Welcome to the Jada and Stitches Show. I love to make hats. It's one of my favorite things of all time to do. They are fun, they're fast, they're useful, and they're a great thing to add to the Make Ahead stash because who doesn't need a hat? And when it's super cold outside, like it is today, I love to make them extra cozy and extra colorful. So today we've got a brand new hat pattern for you and we are going to use Woolies Thick and Quick by Lion Brand Yarns. And we'd like to thank Lion Brand for sponsoring today's video. Woolies Thick and Quick is a size 6 super bulky weight yarn. It's an acrylic wool 80-20% blend and it comes in a whole bunch of colors and color ways. In fact, the color palette that I chose to make this hat out of is called Carousel. And it's, it looks like a bunch of pastel carousel horses all swirling around in a cloud. If it was candy, I would literally have eaten this hat. <laughs> it's super pretty. So that's what we're going to use for today's project. Now, the Woolies Thick and Quick yarn, one ball is enough to make one hat for a child, a tween, a teen, or a lady with a medium to small sized head like me. If you are making them for a man or a larger head or a head with a lot of hair, you might want to get two balls of the size 6 super bulky Woolies Thick and Quick in the same color just to make sure that you've got enough yarn. And if you only need one ball, well then you've got another ball to make another hat. One for you and one for the Make Ahead stash. <laughs> Because we're using a size 6 super bulky weight yarn for this hat, we want nice, loose tension. So if you have a tendency to crochet tightly, then you're going to want to use an even larger hook than the one I'm using. And we'll talk a little bit about that in the tutorial. But also try to keep in mind that you just want a nice, loose, easygoing tension for this hat pattern. In fact, anytime you're dealing with super bulky weight size 6 yarn and you don't want a thick fabric. And if you like this big poofy furry pom-pom that I'm wearing on top of my hat, we have a tutorial for this too. It's our furry pom-pom tutorial. It's a sewing tutorial using faux fur. And if you've never held a sewing needle and yarn or a sewing needle and thread in your life, you can make this. It's that easy. And we'll link that in the description box down below and the pinned comment as well. And that's where you'll also find lionbrand.com so you can pop over and check out all of the pretty colorways that this Woolies Thick and Quick comes in. All right, let's grab our hooks, we'll grab our yarn, we'll grab our faux fur, maybe, and we'll head on over to the craft table and stitch up a new woolly winter hat together. For our hat today, we are using Woolies Thick and Quick by Lion Brand. Each of these balls is 140 grams or 87 yards. We're going to be using the whole thing. It's an 80-20% acrylic wool blend, and this pretty color is Carousel. You're also going to want a pair of scissors, a yarn needle, a measuring tape, very handy if you're making this hat for someone else, and the hook we're using today is a big one. It's a 9mm, also known as an M, as in Mama, or 13 in the US. But if you have tight tension, you can go up to a size 10 millimeter. If you have looser tension, you can go down to an 8 millimeter. And once you've got all that together, we can get started. Please visit our shop and purchase a pattern. It helps support our show. And we'll put a link to our shop in the description box down below. You're going to want to know the circumference of the head you are making the hat for. This is where you take your measuring tape, wrap it around your head, across the back, over top of your ears, and have the ends cross in the middle of your forehead. My head is a 22 inch circumference. That's pretty standard for most ladies or teens, even tweens. And we have a head sizing chart over on the tools page of our website that you can check out if you don't have the head you want to make the hat for handy. And those have pretty general come sizing available so you can make it a custom size if you need to. But we are going to sort of toss out some general sizing rules as we go along. We're going to begin with the ribbed cuff or the bottom of the hat. We're going to start with a slip knot. And if you're making this for a child, and children are usually under the age of 10, you're going to chain 4. If you're making this for a tween, a teen, or adult, you're going to chain 6. Once you have 4 or 6 chains, depending on who you're making the hat for, we're going to skip the first chain from the hook, find the next chain, and single crochet into it. You're going to single crochet in each chain all the way back to the beginning. 
You'll have three single crochets in the row if you're making it for a child. You'll have five single crochets if you're making it for a tween, teen, or adult. At the end of row one, chain one and turn. You're going to chain one and turn for every row in the ribbed cuff section of the hat. We will be using the back loops only for the ribbed cuff. This is what gives us that nice little ribbed effect. The back loop is always the loop of the stitch that's furthest from you. Always skip the turning chain and you're going to continue to single crochet, but you're going to single crochet into the back loops only of each stitch in the row. So your row count will always be, I should say the stitch count in each row will always be the same. It's three for children, five for adults. You will single crochet into the back loop only of every single stitch. When you get to the end of a row, don't miss that last stitch. Sometimes it wants to pull itself down the edge. So make sure you get that last back loop only and that will create this lovely bumped effect. It also gives us a little bit of stretch. Chain one, turn at the end of every single row. Always skip your turning chain. Find the back loop, always the loop furthest from you, and single crochet back loops only in every single stitch. You're going to continue this until you have, when slightly stretched, a ribbed piece of fabric that matches your circumference measurement. So I'm heading for 22 inches. It is also important that the number of rows in your ribbed cuff is a multiple of three. And I'll explain a little bit more about that in a moment. Your ribbed cuff will have a nice ribbing effect thanks to that back loops only pattern that we're working. 36 rows should fit tweens, teens, ladies, 30 rows should fit children under the age of 10, and 39 rows of the rib stitch should fit men or larger heads. Now, if you need a much larger size, you can just keep adding three rows because you want a multiple of three in your row count. And if you need it to be slightly smaller, then you can stop at 30, try it on, and if you need a smaller cuff, take out three rows. But it's very important that your ribbed row count is a multiple of three. So 30 for kids, 36 for tweens and ladies, teens, and 39 for men or larger hats, or three up or three down for custom sizing. We're going to seam our hats now. So we're gonna take the two short edges and put them together. If you didn't chain one at the end of your last row, then chain one. No need to turn. You can if you want, but you don't have to. And what we're going to do is back loops only slip stitch. So we're gonna put our hook through the back loop only of the last row and all the way through the foundation chain of the first row. Slip stitch. Try not to make your stitches too tight. If you had an even row count like I did, then you'll have your little tail at the bottom. If you had an odd row count, you'll have your little tail at the top. It doesn't matter. And we are slip stitching through back loops and the entire foundation chain. And at the end of this little seam row, you can decide if you like the look of your slip stitch seam, in which case you'll just continue, no turning, no flipping, nothing. And if you want to hide your slip stitch seam, you can flip your hat rim inside out. So I like the way that looks because it kind of mimics the ribbed edging, but you can also flip it inside out if you want it to disappear completely, or maybe you don't like the way your stitching looked. So it's entirely up to you. You can flip it inside out. You can leave it right side. Uh, I should say you can flip it right side, wrong side out, <laughs> which will now be your right side, or you can leave it right side facing like I've got here. doesn't matter. It's entirely up to you. Either way, we're all going to move on together. I'm gonna to get my little tail out of the way. I will weave that in at a later time. Here we go. We are going to chain one to start, and this is the first row in our ribbed, or I should say in the, the hat upper. So this is an establishing row. We're not gonna work the pattern stitch yet. We are going to skip 
the seam part of our hat and we are going to look at the ribbing and we're going to look for the inside edge and the outside edge. So the outside edge is pretty, pretty easy to see. It's that ribbed effect and the inside edge is what happens in between the ribs. And you are going to work a single crochet into the edge of each of those rows. So inside, outside, inside, outside. And you're going to have, I'm going to pick up my first one here. You're going to pick up loops along the edge and you're going to single crochet. Then you're going to join, sort of grab one on the inside, and then the outside. So you're looking for inside, outside, inside, outside, and the edge of each of those rows gets a single crochet worked into the top. You're going to single crochet in the edge of each of those cuff rows all the way around. If you had 30 rows for kids, you'll have 30 single crochets. If you had 36 rows, like me, you'll have 36 single crochets, and 39 rows, you'll have 39 crochets. When you work the last single crochet into the edge of the last row, count them up, you should have a multiple of three. That's 30 for kids, 36 for teens and ladies, 39 for men or large, or a custom number, but it has to be a multiple of three. You're going to skip the seam and you're going to find the first single crochet you made, which is right here. The top of it will look like it's coming out of the seam. So the top of that stitch sits to the right if you're working right-handed. It sits to the left if you're working left-handed. You're going to slip your hook through that and join with a slip stitch. I'm going to work over top of that little short tail. There we go. And we are ignoring this. This little guy becomes the false stitch. Uh, but you're not going to have to pay too much attention to it going forward. So if you're counting up your stitches just to be sure, either don't count the one you just worked into and count this one, or skip this one and count that one, and you should still have 30, 36, or 39. Let's get into our small V-stitch pattern. We're going to stay right where we are. We're going to chain one, so every row begins with a chain one. Into that same stitch that we joined in, we are going to single crochet, chain one, and into the same stitch, single crochet. So nice and easy. Try not to be tight with your stitches. And that little guy is a small V-stitch. Single crochet, chain one, single crochet, all worked into the same stitch. Here's why we need a multiple of three. Skip two stitches, find the next one, and start all over again. Single crochet, chain one, single crochet. Skip two stitches, find the next one, single crochet, chain one, and single crochet. And we're using the whole stitch. So we get this really cute little small v-stitch pattern happening, and that little stitch right in the middle, that's the chain one. You're going to repeat that all the way around. Skip two stitches and small V-stitch into the third, which is single crochet, chain one, single crochet. At the end of this row, you'll have 10 small V-stitches if you're making a child's hat, 12 small V-stitches for teens and ladies, or 13 V-stitches for men's or large. Or if you're making a custom number, you take your total stitch count, which is a multiple of three, divided by three, and that is the number of small V-stitches you'll have all the way around your hat. At the end of the first row of our V-stitch pattern, you'll have two stitches left. Remember, we are skipping the false stitch. That's what that little chain one comes out of that began the row. So ignore that. You should have two actual stitches left and we're all going to join with a slip stitch to the first single crochet we made. So your first single crochet should be bigger, and the little bump in the middle of your V-stitch is your chain one. So you're just going to slip stitch into the whole stitch. That slip stitch to join. You should have 10 V-stitches for a child's hat, 12 for teens, ladies, 13 for adults, 
or I should say a large adult or male. And if you're using a custom stitch count, take that original stitch count number, divide it by three, and that's how many motifs you'll have in every single row going forward. We are all going to slip stitch into the space between the single crochet. So you can get underneath that chain one in the middle and just slip stitch. So we're all starting in the space underneath. So you find that chain one, and just stick your finger through there and it'll split those two single crochets. Chain one and into the same space, you're going to create a small V stitch. Single crochet, chain one, single crochet. And that space gets larger for you as you work that little V stitch. If you have trouble identifying the middle of your V-stitches, just count over. One, two, there's number three. I have to stick my hook in right underneath that. So you still skip two stitches, V-stitch into the third. Still that little pattern, single crochet, chain one, single crochet. But you're not trying to stick your hook through the chain, you're just trying to get in underneath it. So skip a stitch, skip a, skip a stitch. There's the little chain one. That's the middle of the V-stitch. I'm going to slip my hook right underneath that and single crochet. Remember, we don't want tight tension. We want nice, big, fat, beautiful, luscious stitches. And there is the little mini V-stitch or the small V-stitch pattern appearing. Every V-stitch is worked into the center of the V-stitch from the previous row. So every row is going to act like this. Skip your two stitches. That's obviously underneath the third, so I'll stick my hook right in the middle. The small V-stitch works really well with big hooks and nice, thick, bulky weight yarn. It's got some give, it's got a little bit of stretch, and it's just beautiful. It helps to really show off that pretty thick yarn. And it's a nice, easy stitch to, to handle. So I'm gonna let you finish off the row putting a little a small V-stitch in the middle of every single V-stitch from the previous row, and I'll catch up with you at the end. At the end of every row, when you finish your last small V-stitch, you'll have two actual stitches to skip. There's your false stitch. You want to find the first single crochet you made, and it helps. There's always a little bump created by that chain one which means that that's the top of the actual single crochet. So you just join with a slip stitch in the top of that single crochet. That polishes off the row. You'll still have the same number of V-stitches in this row as you did the previous row, and that won't change. And you can kind of pull it apart, give it a little bit of stretch, keep it nice and loose, and you can really see that cute little mini V-stitch or small V-stitch pattern happening. Every row begins by slip stitching into the chain one space, which is the space underneath that chain one. It's the middle of a V-stitch. See that? There's the space. Chain one to start the row. The chain one that begins the row basically brings our row edge up to the height of a single crochet. And then we create a small V-stitch in the same place. So chain one, or I should say single crochet, chain one, single crochet. That's your V-stitch. Do the whole thing into the middle of that first V-stitch. Remember, they all stack directly on top of each other. So then you move to the next V-stitch, or skip two stitches. That's the next space. Slip your hook right underneath that third stitch. That third stitch should always be the chain one from the previous V-stitch. And single crochet, chain one, single crochet into the middle of it. That is all you're going to do all the way around. Always join with a slip stitch to the first single crochet, slip stitch into that chain one space, chain one to start the row and V-stitch and off you go. For children, you're going to work at least 11 rows. For tweens, teens, and ladies, 11 rows. And for men or larger, 12 to 13 rows. And that's at least. From bottom of the cuff all the way up to the top for children, it should measure approximately 18 inches nine inches for ladies and teens, and 10 inches for men or larger hats. But you can also just keep repeating this small V-stitch pattern until you run out of yarn. When you get to the end of your last row, join with a slip stitch to that first single crochet, and give your fabric a stretch. It is easy to tighten up when we're working a kind of stitch like this, but you can be 
kind of rough with your hat. Give it a stretch. Make sure that it's still sort of sitting evenly above your ribbing. And if it feels a little tight, don't worry about it because with wear or the first wash, it will loosen up significantly. I've got 12 rows of my little V-stitch here. 11 would have been enough, but I thought, eh, why not just use up the rest of the ball? And I've got 12 rows. If I measure my hat from the top edge to the bottom, it's nine and a half inches, and nine inches was my target. So this is going to give me just a little bit of extra slouch up top. Once again, if you're measuring top to bottom for children, it should be at least eight inches, 10 for men or larger. Once you've joined that, last row, you can slip stitch and fasten off. Just pull whatever yarn is left through that space because we are going to cinch up the top of our hat. So we're going to take our yarn needles, we're going to thread up that long tail that's left behind, and if you don't have a whole lot of yarn, you basically need around, oh, nine inches. And if you are short, don't worry, just tie in any yarn you've got, doesn't matter what size. Uh, tie on a, a length of about 9 or 10 inches of a color that sort of matches or is similar or um, will be maybe blend in if you're using a, a variegated or a self-striping kind of tweedy yarn like I am because this isn't really going to show. You're going to take your needle and you're going to weave it out and then back in through the V stitches. So you're going to find the middle of all those V stitches and you're going to go in out, in out, all the way around. You can pause every so often to sort of pull up that yarn. And if you had 10 V stitches, You'll go in and out 10 times, 12, 13, etc. When you get back around at the beginning, doesn't matter if you're on the inside or the outside, just gently cinch up the top of your hat. And then I like to sort of, once I get that space closed, I like to hold the cinch right where the yarn leaves. And then I'm just going to work a few stay stitches. If you're using a different colored yarn, you're going to run your needle right through to the inside of the hat and you're going to do the stay stitches on the inside so your yarn doesn't show. But if you're using the same yellow colored yarn, then you can just sort of start poking your needle through some of those bunched up stitches at the top, just a couple at a time. Very gently pull your yarn through. Keep that cinch going. And you're just going to weave your needle through some of those bunched up stitches at the top and that'll just keep the space from opening back up. And like I say, do this on the inside of the hat if you're using a different color. And you don't need to do this very much. And that'll close up the top of your hat. And then once you've finished weaving all that yarn through those stitches, you're going to poke your needle to the inside of the hat if you're not there already. You can sort of pull your hat inside out for this. Work a few stay stitches across the bottom and stay stitches are just basically a few stitches worked across what would be the opening just to keep that part of your hat from wanting to open back up. Do this three or four times doesn't matter where you stick in your needle, just across that top. Then you're going to knot off. So slip your hook or your needle underneath some of that yarn. Loop your yarn through and do it at least twice. And then you can weave in your tail. And if you have a significant amount left over like me, then you can just trim whatever doesn't need to be there. So, especially with this kind of a wool blend yarn, your tails should not want to come undone. There we go. I think that's enough. And trim. Trim. 
and flip your hat right side out. And if you want, you can add a pom-pom or a fluffy pom. We're going to link to our fluffy pom-pom tutorial in the description box down below because that is such a cute topper for a hat like this. Or you can just leave it plain. And that is a hat. And it's a one ball project. I love these. And because it's Woolies Thick and Quick, it really is thick. It really is quick. It's a quick little pattern. It's a quick little project. And now you're all ready to go for a walk in the super cool weather. And can I just say again how much I love the carousel colorway. I want a whole room in this colorway. It is so pretty. Every time the color changed, my brain got delighted all over again. In fact, I was constantly distracting myself throughout this entire hat making process because the color was just, oh, it was so pretty. I love the coral and I love that blue and that turquoise. And anyway, if you are looking for Woolies Thick and Quick by Lion Brand, check out Lion Brand in the description box down below and the pinned comment. And again, if you like this furry pom-pom and you want to try one for yourself, We'll link to that tutorial too. The written pattern will be available in our Etsy shop and it will include the template to make this pom-pom if you want to add one to your hat. We hope you enjoyed today's woolly winter hat project. We hope you have a cozy week ahead of you. Stay safe, stay crafty, and we'll see you all soon. Bye guys! Hi everyone, this is Mama and Stitches. Thank you for watching. Here are a few other videos you might enjoy. Don't forget to subscribe and you can also click the like button and the bell. Thank you. Have a wonderful day.